Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are going to look at sensitivity analysis. And this is a method for simulating circuits that looks at applying specific deviations to components so you can predict how your circuit will respond to certain variations during operation or during design. What is sensitivity analysis versus Monte Carlo analysis? Well, we're gonna briefly discuss what that is, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the Monte Carlo project that we did previously, and instead of doing Monte Carlo analysis, we're actually gonna do sensitivity analysis, and we're going to look at how our circuit performs with specific variations, and I'll show you how you can actually analyze this using Excel. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's go ahead and get started and have some fun. Okay, so I am inside Altium Designer on our Monte Carlo demo project that we looked at previously. And what I'm gonna look at here is we're gonna look at sensitivity analysis. Now, if you wanna follow along in your own circuits or you wanna follow along with this demo circuit, make sure to go get a free trial of Altium Designer. You can download it, try it out, play around with some of the simulation tools, play around with the layout tools and see if it's gonna work best for you. So in this circuit, we had essentially a RLC circuit with a series resistor here applied to our input voltage source to basically mimic an output impedance on our voltage source. So we've got our 100 ohm uh, output resistance here, and then we've got our 40 nanofarad capacitor, our 10 microhenry inductor, and then we've got a 100k ohm load. We want to analyze this uh, particular circuit using sensitivity analysis. So first, what is sensitivity analysis? Well, if you remember what Monte Carlo analysis is, with Monte Carlo analysis, the computer is basically generating random component values, and you're using that randomly generated set of component values to generate a set of simulation results, either transient analysis or AC sweep or whatever other simulation. The point is you are using random generated uh, component values with tolerances that you get to specify in the simulator. Sensitivity analysis is a little different. With sensitivity analysis, you aren't actually using any component tolerance, although you can apply a variation that matches a component tolerance. And so I'll show you what I mean here in just a moment. But with sensitivity analysis, you are applying a specific deviation in one or more component values. And then you are looking at how an output value, let's say like the uh, output current across our resistor here, R1 in this circuit, or maybe uh, the voltage drop across R1 in this circuit, which is actually what we'll look at. That is what you'll be looking at, and you'll be looking at how exactly that value deviates based on your chosen deviations in your component values. To start up this simulation, what you do is just go to the simulation dashboard. So I've already gone through the verification step here. You can see it passes the electrical rule check and it uh, passes the simulation models check. And in the preparation section, I've already added in some probes, I've chosen my simulation source here. And then here, we would basically go through in the analysis setup and run uh, section, we would go through and set up our transient or AC sweep results. So in this case, I'm gonna start with AC sweep. Now you'll notice down here, there's a little box that says sensitivity. Now that is what we wanna look at. So if you're gonna do sensitivity analysis, make sure you check that box. And then you'll go in here to the settings window to configure everything. In the sensitivity tab on the settings window, from here, what you can do is you can now configure the deviations that you want to apply to specific components in order to examine how exactly this circuit is going to respond to specific deviations. What you can do is you can apply these to groups, kind of like what we did with uh, Monte Carlo analysis. So if you remember with Monte Carlo analysis, we were actually putting in group level tolerances. So we could say apply a 5% variation to all resistors or 5% variation to all capacitors if we wanted to, just as an example. 
Okay, so what we're looking at in this window, in the customs deviations uh, window, is uh, we have these different uh, fractions here with these different decimal values. So previously in the Monte Carlo simulation, you'll notice here that we entered in percentages directly for the component tolerances. Here, we're just looking at a 5% deviation, but this is just written out as a decimal. So we're doing a 5% deviation both up and down in the inductor value. And here we could just keep adding parameters, right? I could change L1 as high as, let's say, 10%, and I could change it in the opposite direction by 10%. Whatever values I want to enter, I could put in, you know, 90% here if I really wanted to. Um, and what this is going to do is the simulation is actually going to set the inductor to those specific values and run the SPICE simulation over again at each one of those specific values. And then you can very clearly see what happens in that simulation as those different values for that inductor are chosen. So this is one way to essentially try out different values of your inductor. Another way to think of this is this is looking at the extreme cases of a component tolerance. So let's just say for a moment that um, L1 here was a plus or minus 10% inductor. So that's, you know, a typical value. Um, if this is a plus or minus 10% inductor, these last two entries in the customs deviations area, that is going to account for the maximum possible tolerance or the maximum stated tolerance that is for that particular inductor in a simulation. And you're gonna be able to see exactly how the output circuit varies given that deviation. Now it's only changing the value of L1 in this simulation. Make sure I uncheck group deviations, but it's only gonna change the value of L1 in this simulation. And again, I could add in another parameter, change it to C1, I could vary that if I wanted to. So you can kind of have some fun uh, selecting some different circuit parameters and then using that in the simulation. So once I'm all set up, I just hit okay, and let's do an AC sweep just to see how this comes out. So here's our AC sweep results. You can see it's extremely fast. We're just gonna zoom in here on uh, these voltage curves. Now, what do you see here? Well, you see a bunch of voltage curves that are all overlaid on each other. And this is really similar to what we did in Monte Carlo analysis. If you remember with the Monte Carlo analysis video, what we did is we took account of random variations in component values. The computer was randomly generating component values and then using those random sets of component values to calculate each of these curves. Here, there's no random generation. We're telling the computer which specific values to use. This top one, that's our 0% deviation. That's basically our 10 uh, microhenry inductor. And then you can see here, as the inductor value is changed up or down, we eventually get to our maximum deviation here, which is plus and minus 10% for these last two curves. And that shows us exactly how the behavior of the circuit changes as we go through and vary that value of the inductor. So again, this is pretty useful because this lets us take account of that maximum possible deviation in the component value due to tolerances. We can literally just program that into the simulator and then allow the simulation to run and then we can see exactly how this peak is going to change. So this is really important because let's say you were using this for a filter and you needed to filter at a very specific frequency. This is going to let you check how that filtration frequency in that filter varies due to these component tolerances. So there's a bit more that you would normally do with sensitivity analysis, and it relies on exporting all of this data and then doing some more statistical analysis on it. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna look at the value of this uh, transfer curve at one specific frequency. So what we can do here is if we go to File and Export, and then we go to, I believe Export Plot, what we can do is we can export all of this data as a CSV file. So if I just hit OK, it's then gonna come up with a window here. I'm just gonna put this on, I'll put it in my Documents folder. Go ahead and save it. And now what I can do is bring it into Microsoft Excel and we can do some analysis. Okay, so now I've imported all of this into Microsoft Excel, and uh, the stuff that we really care about here was these voltage curves. Here in our simulation, you'll notice we were at a nominal peak frequency of right about 250 kilohertz, so that's where we wanna look. So what we can do now that we've exported all of this data is we can actually plot all of these different values of the voltage right at 
250 kilohertz, and then we can make a statement for how that voltage is going to vary given a 10% variation in our inductance. So then we can make a decision as to whether or not 10% is going to be too large for us to accept in this circuit. Now you'll notice something here, you know, 10% is pretty big here because 10% just from looking at this causes the peak voltage to vary from about 250 kilohertz all the way down to about 240 kilohertz. So you might decide based on your operating parameters that 10 kilohertz is way too much deviation and then you would want to select a more precise inductor. So to do this, you'd essentially just go down here to 250 kilohertz. We'd want to copy all of this data and then we can put it into a plot and look at it. Okay, so now I've taken all of my data, I've moved it over here, and I've basically grouped this all together so that on the x-axis, I'm plotting the deviation, and on the y-axis, I'm plotting the voltage. So if I just go over to here, insert, scatter plot, you can see here we get a nice little graph, then you can go through and do some manipulation on this. So what this would allow you to do is to look at what is an acceptable level of deviation here that we can accept in order to, let's say, cause a voltage drop of no more than, uh, let's say, 10%. Well, 10% would put you at about 4.5, so that means you're gonna be about between 5% and 10% component tolerance that you could accept if you wanted to hit that spec. And once you have all of this in a curve, you can add a trend line, you can do things like this and you know, really get in and analyze this. It's always fun to then you know, throw an equation up here, look at where it intersects with specific values. If you're not a math person, don't worry about it. But the point here is that you can now really see exactly how those component tolerances are going to affect a specific value that is being output from this circuit and then you can make a determination as to whether that component tolerance is too large. So that is kind of the essence of sensitivity analysis. You would often do this by looking at multiple components at once, or you would look at them in isolation and kind of construct multiples of these curves and try and figure out what are some of these maximum deviations that you can accept. So there's a lot more statistical theory that goes into this when you're actually looking at groups of deviations, and maybe that's something we'll discuss in another video. And if you wanna see that video, please hit the comment section, leave your request there, if you wanna see it, I would love to do that video. I just wanna make sure that you guys are going to enjoy that type of math theoretical video because it is a bit more in depth, but it is still a lot of fun. All right, thanks everybody. And uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button, help us hack that YouTube algorithm, keep up to date with all the newest videos coming out, hit the like button, make sure you leave your questions and comments in the comment section. And of course, send over your questions to YouTube at allteam.com. We're gonna be doing more Q and A sessions. We love getting your Q and A questions and we definitely love hearing from you. All right, thanks everybody. That's all I got for today. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.